Come in. All right, Buster. Close your eyes and hold out your hands. <sighs> Oh, Peggy, that is so nice. Go ahead and open it. Now? Yes, now. Should I wait till Christmas? Just open it. Oh, I hope it's a hat. Yeah, it's a sombrero. Oh, Peggy, Carnavelli is my favorite. I know. Oh, that's incredible. I don't know what to say. Say thank you. Thank you. It's around 20 short stories and another 30, 40 poems. This is fantastic. Thank you. My favorite is the one about the king that sends the knight to slay the beast that killed his daughter. And finding the beast, he finds him diseased and sick, so instead of killing him, he, he exiles him. Banished to the Cave of Sorrows? Exactly. You're not the only book nerd around here. In middle school, the other girls had Anne of Green Gables. I had Cardabelli. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> My favorite, and I must have read it a thousand times, is the one with the handmaiden who's taken captive by the ogre and held in a bean field. She escapes by burning down the bean field and the ogre along with it. Yeah, I haven't read that one. Well, you're going to love it. Well, I hope there's one in here about a wizard with a spell that can make his client stop making incredibly stupid decisions. Yeah, well, that's some strong magic. But then you'd be out of a job. Hey, so would you, lady. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, Craig's been trying to steal me away from you for years. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Would Craig give you... Top shelf hooch every year for Christmas? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, you do know the way to a girl's heart, Cal. You deserve a distillery for putting up with my shit all year. Oh, you're a pleasure to work with. As are you, Peggy. Thank you. Thank you. But let's not rule out that distillery idea. I'll keep you in mind. <laughs> so, how'd it go with Shelly? Well, I haven't made a decision yet. He's given me a lot to think about. Well, you know what I think you should do. I do. I do. So you off till Christmas now? Or New Year's, New Year's. <laughs> and thanks to you, it's gonna be Holly and Jolly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing a family Christmas thing. Mom is texting now. Not her strong suit. <laughs> You know, I don't know. It's only going to be a matter of time before she... Did. There it is. There, just calls. <laughs> just calls. Well, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Yeah. Give my best to Bert. You got it. Same Hi, Mom. Can you please bring some eggnog? Mom, you literally just texted me that. Yes. And the non-alcoholic? And the non-alcoholic one for the kids. Yes. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Remember, your nephews accidentally got into the real deal last yeah, year. Yeah, Gramps did that because he wanted them to go to sleep. He was tired of playing Uno. What? What time is everyone arriving? Vince is bringing the kids by this afternoon. Pearl and Marty's flight gets in about 4 o'clock. Everybody else should be arriving around 6. I'd like to serve dinner around 7. All right. Sounds good. See you then, Mom. Bye, sweetie. <sighs> Cardavelli. Carnavelli you're reading by chance? By chance. It is. Yeah. How could you tell? I thought I recognized the uh, illustration. Ah, good eye. Another Merlot, Rabbi? Uh, yes, Scotty. Please, thank you. Uh, 
I particularly love the story of the King's Knight and the Mission of Vengeance. Mm. It's my favorite. It's a good one. But my favorite... The handmaiden who escapes the ogre and burns down the bean field. No, I haven't read that one yet. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. I was going to say my favorite is the one in the title, The Horseman of Rastava. So you read that? I have. Good. Because it would be terribly rude of me to ruin such a great story for a complete stranger. Touche. So, what was your favorite trial of the horseman? Oh, wow. Um, I think the one about the flock of crows sent by the witch as he carried the letter through the dark forest. Mine too, yeah. What do you think was in the letter? It wasn't good news, that's for sure. Made the queen so angry she killed him. The summary execution of the bearer of bad news, eh? Exactly. Exactly. And we never know who sent the letter. The story just starts with him delivering it. I always pictured him returning from the battlefield. Maybe it's bad news. Maybe it's news of the defeat of the Queen's army. I have a different theory. In my theory, the horseman He's carrying the letter about himself. He just doesn't know it. In the letter, he's implicated in a crime or a scandal, maybe even betrayal of the crown. He presents the letter to the queen. She passes judgment and has him executed. In my little scenario, it was a real traitor that framed the horseman. Hmm. Mm. That is really interesting. So he unwittingly risks life and limb to deliver a message that costs him life and limb. Exactly, the scapegoat leading himself to the slaughter. Wow. Bye bye. Can I? I'm sorry. I was presumptuous. I oh, should have. What? What is it? Well, I'd like to get your advice on something, if that's okay. How can I help? My boss offered me a promotion. Normally I'd say, muzzle tough. But I sense it's not that simple. Yeah, I'm just not... I'm just not sure if I should take it something I want. I just don't know if I'm ready. I, I don't want to take it and fail. I know you don't know me. You don't know my job, but it... How do you know the difference between right and wrong, decision-wise? Can I tell you a story? A couple, a young couple came to me. They were having trouble in their marriage. Arguments over how to raise their son. She thought they should do it a certain way, and he thought they should do it another. I invited him to my house for some mediation. We sat down in the living room, and she began to tell me what she thought they should do. I listened, and when she was finished, I said, you're right. And her husband said, you haven't heard my side yet. So he started to tell me what he thought they should do. I listened, and when he was finished, I said, you're right. My wife called me into the kitchen. She said, these people came over here for help. You can't agree with both of them. I told her, you're right. Yeah, Rabbi, that's not helpful. Rarely are things black or white, and only you know what is right for you. But by being indecisive, it's actually a good thing. 
helps you to keep an open mind, dig a little deeper below the surface to find out what's important to you. Uh, Scotty, I think I'll settle up now. I'll be right by. Thank you, Scott. Bye bye. It was nice talking with you. Likewise. But don't stay indecisive too long. A man who has a foot on both sides of the fence will find it hard to take a leap of faith. Thanks, Rabbi. Stranger Joe Dreyfus. I know, I know, it's a long time, right? This is my new mobile number, which is probably why you didn't pick up. Anyways, my business has brought me to your fair city, so I was thinking we should grab a drink or dinner or something. Give me a call, dude. It'd be great to catch up. Later. Hey, it's Cal. Uh, sorry to be calling so late. I just got a call from Joe Dreyfus. Guess he's gonna be in Phoenix and wants to meet up for drinks or something tomorrow. Not sure what I'm gonna do yet. Just thought you'd find that interesting. Anyway, hope you're good. Joe Dreyfus? You're joking. <laughs> wow. Nope, not joking. That is so random. When is the last time you saw him? Years, right? Before I moved to Phoenix. So weird. Are you gonna see him? I think I, I, I think I need to, if that makes sense. I'm sure you'll have fun. Joe is a fun guy. So, yeah, so... How's Boston treating you? You know, Boston is Boston. I, I'm sorry, I, I gotta go. Hey, you all done with those? 
Mr. Baker? Yeah. Are you all done with that? Yeah, yeah. I see Grace, hang on. I'm not I'm not done. Sorry. Hey, Joe. How's it going, man? It's good. Hey, I know it's kind of spur of the moment, but are you free tonight? I'm taking the red eye, so I've got the whole night to hang out. Uh, yeah, we close up here early for Christmas Eve, so after three? That'll work. I need to make some sales calls anyways. Hey, is Kate coming? Uh, no, just me. All right, guys night. Nice. I'm staying at the Foundry Hotel on North Central Avenue. Can you pick me up? Yep. See you then. Pretty damn light. You're not gonna need the jacket here, that's for sure. No, nah, this weather's great. Guess I'm only kind of missing the snow on account of it being Christmas and all. Right. And before this, uh, I spent two days in Albuquerque. Ooh. Yeah. How was that? For Albuquerque is pretty much Albuquerque, I guess. <laughs> it's just one bag. I'm seriously impressed. Too bad Kate couldn't make it. How's she doing, anyways? Uh, yeah, uh, we're not together anymore. She's still on the East Coast. Ah, oh, shit. I'm sorry, dude. I just assumed it's that you... It's all good. It's all good. You know, when I moved out here, we tried the whole long-distance dating thing, but we just never clicked. We're still friends, though. That's too bad. At least you're still friends, huh? There you go. take our picture outside you remember that yeah. he wasn't a homeless guy okay he was just some weird guy and we didn't ask him to take our picture you asked him <laughs> to take our picture with my phone that would get kept backing up and backing up and backing up oh hey i gotta get everybody in the picture god he was standing in the middle of the street <laughs> he almost got run over by that cab you remember I didn't that care i just thought he was gonna turn and bolt with my phone that was that was a really really fun night <sighs> That was an amazing night. That was the first first time I'd ever had oysters. That's right. That was like your oyster quincenero, wasn't it? <laughs> That's what it was. Yep. That's Dude, was. I could really go for some oysters. Is where we're going to serve oysters? Uh, yeah, actually, I think they do. Yes. Oh, 
So where are we going anyways? Uh, it's a local joint. I, I thought you probably got your fill of chains. So we're not going to Applebee's? Yeah, oysters at Applebee's, yeah. Could you even imagine the litany of new and deadly foodborne <laughs> pathogens that would be discovered? No doubt, no mm. doubt. Mm. Huh. You traveling a lot these days? Yeah, more than I used to. But hey, at least I get to meet inexplicably strange people. Cal, I'm telling you, it is a tapestry of human oddities out there. Really? Yeah. Mm. I met this one dude, weird dude. He's the kind of guy that used to wear a sleeveless vest, man. Well, all vests are sleeveless. I mean, if they have sleeves or shirts. What was his name? It was uh, Richard something, but the something was like something anus. <laughs> his name was Dick Anus? Well, it wasn't pronounced anus. I hope it wasn't. No, but when you saw it on paper, it was definitely anus. What was his name? I don't know. Don't worry, I'm sure it'll come to you in the end. Oh! Oh, you no! You did not, <laughs> you did not go there. Oh, my God. Uh, that is a total fucking uh, dad joke if I ever Oh, uh, good God, not my dad. My dad would never tell a joke like that. Oh, mine would. But he'd never do it around the house. It's always at a baseball game or something. My mom would have called Father Pelagic. She ever caught dad? Telling a dirty joke, yeah. I would have come home to a full-blown fucking exorcism <laughs> in my living room. I swear uh, to God. How's he doing, by the way? Father Polarchic, he's probably retired by now, don't you think? <sighs> Pops is 83. He's spry as, well, spry, I guess. Mm. Oh, shit. Yeah, he still goes to the AAA games yeah. in Columbus. Pencil, paper, keep score. Uh, ah. I never understood that. What? Keeping score? No. Baseball. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Listen, besides baseball being mind-numbingly boring, why would I want to keep score? I mean, don't the umpires keep track of that thing? Don't they have responsibility for that? Has there ever been a, a game in the history of baseball where the umpire turned around, stood up, and yelled to the stands, Hey, does anybody have the score? Ten old guys stand up, pencil and paper in their hand. Pop does it for fun. It's like, uh, a, like a souvenir. Yeah. Some of the old guys, they'll get, they get way into it. That's meaning for him. Like, Ken Griffey batted 600 at all the games I went to. That sort of thing, I guess. To each their own. So, have you adopted all the Phoenix teams? Nah. All I really care about is football. Oh. So you're a sports snob now. <laughs> What about the Cardinals? You adopted the Cardinals? Well, I pull for them. I'm a Colts fan. I was born a Colts fan. I will die a Colts fan. From Baltimore to Indy. I don't care if they fucking move to Timbuktu. I am a Colts fan for life. Oh, man. It's dark days for your Colts, my friend. Yeah. It's been a rough season for them. Yeah, too many big injuries. Johnny Unitas ain't walking through that door. <laughs> Peyton Manning ain't walking through that door. <laughs> Hell, you'd probably be excited if Jeff George walked through that door, hey, wouldn't you? Hey, your Bengals ain't doing any better. Dude, since I was in Buffalo, I kind of got on the Bills back. Oh, right? no. Yeah. Really? You're part of the Bills Mafia now. Yeah. Yikes. Yep. I know they're the most trailer trash franchise in all of professional yeah. sports. They got some loyal fans. That they do. They're the most trailer trash fans in all of professional sport. Yeah. Dude, getting a DUI in Buffalo is like a rite of passage. It's a match made in freaking heaven. I'm telling you. But you ditched your Bengals for that. Well, the one you're with, right? I don't know. When we were in Atlanta, you weren't a Falcons fan. Yeah, well, the Bengals were pretty good back then. So, where is this restaurant? Are you lost? Yes, that's it. I'm lost. Do you even fucking live here? <laughs> no, this, you're right. This is all a ruse. I actually just flew in from Chicago this morning. I fucking do it. I do it. I do it. 
seriously, are we close? I'm kind of getting hungry here. <laughs> Y'all agree. Not even four. Well, I'm getting thirsty. Ah, there it is. There it is. We're three minutes out. Can you hang on three minutes, Hemingway? Or do we need, need to find a drive through liquor store here? They have those here? It's Phoenix. My church has a liquor store. <laughs> Christmas Eve crowd? Yeah, yeah, a lot of snowbirds. I had to make a reservation. That's a nice one. Cherry. 70s, right? 1973. How can you tell? Come here. Check out the front bumper. Here we've got a plastic molded front bumper. Now check out the rear bumper. That's a chrome bumper from 1953 to 1972. All Corvettes had a chrome bumper in the front and a chrome bumper in the rear. From 1974 onward, all Corvettes had a plastic molded form bumper in the front and a plastic bumper in the rear. But in 1973, and only in 1973, the Corvette C3 Stingray had a plastic molded form bumper in the front and a chrome bumper in the rear. Totally unique. One of a kind. So this is a real collector system. Not really. really. Nobody wants them. Why not? Maybe because they're too unique? I don't know. Maybe people that want a Corvette want a Corvette like every other Corvette. Hi, Baker, party of two. Uh, we're early. Go ahead to the bar. Okay. Okay, Baker for two. No problem at all. I'll come meet you when your table's okay. ready. Thank okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a Gentlemen, I just need a couple minutes. I need to change a beer keg in the back and I'll be right back. No rush. No rush? <laughs> but I have another guy that was weighing the idea of a drive through liquor store. Soothing just by being in a bar. I can see all the alcohol and it's there for when I need it. Plus, I'm a big believer in being good to your bartender. Drawing up some goodwill. Reap what you sow, brother. Helps if they believe you're on their side. Their side of what? their side of the bartender patron experience you and me we're not like all those other rubes in here with their buttery chardonnays and their apple teenies you and me we're with them i i don't have it in me to be an advocate right now so how's the gig what are you up to lately uh just this same thing I was doing for Rambo, just as a consultant. You know, now I'm the guy that works with the knee for a bunch of different clients. Those who can't consult, right? <laughs> Those who consult get paid, asshole. <laughs> you like it? Uh, more or less. More or less usually means less. No, it's just. My boss is retired. He wants me to take his place. Well, that's fucking great, right? More or less. I got a great team. I'm, I'm great at what I do. I just... I, this is just more big picture stuff. And? It's not really an and. I just don't know if I'm ready to take that leap. Whoa. Look, when we work together, it was crystal clear that you were wicked smart, man. 
ambitious. You knew your shit. Been a while, bud. Pussyfooting? Doesn't seem like you, man. Do you want it? I think so. Fucking take it. Yeah, probably right. Shit, I'm right as fucking rain, and you know it. Where the hell is it? Hey, what was your name? Nate. Nate? Nate, we're going to celebrate my friend's impending promotion. Can you help us out? It'd be my pleasure. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. What can I get for you? Um, bourbon, neat. Preference. Burnham. And uh, for you, sir. Whiskey sour, four roses. Oh, man. They have quite a selection here. You don't see cast strength bourbons at many bars anymore. It's unusual. Casket strength? Cast strength, not casket strength. Oh. <laughs> Good, because casket strength is way too strong. Bourbon's <laughs> <laughs> so strong, it's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mm. come here for the job or what? In part. Oh, that's right. Your parents are here, aren't they? Right. Uh, yeah. I moved here when I was in college, so, you know, coming home and coming to Phoenix. Is that weird? No. Oh, I love it. Phoenix is awesome. Oh, yeah. Hey. Thank you, Nate. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. oh, it's just what I needed. Mm. You ever had Four Roses? Sure. You know the origin of the name? Uh, Four Roses. Starts with a marriage proposal. Sky falls in love with a woman. So he writes her letter and asks her to marry him. He says, if the answer is yes, come to the big community dance and wear a red rose corsage. So a couple days pass. He goes to the dance, nervous as hell. Walks in. There she is, dressed to the nines. Beautiful. Wearing a corsage with four red roses. Hence, four roses bourbon. <laughs> That's actually a nice story. I like that. I don't see that anymore. What? Proposing in a letter? Eh, not proposing in a letter. Community dances, dressing to the nine, all of it. Ah, halcyon days of yore. Maybe. You know, people probably propose by text nowadays. Thumbs up emoji, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just different now, you know. Baby wow. gender reveals, yes anniversaries. I mean, hell, even asking a girl to prom's a big production. Yeah, you might be right. I proposed to Laura when we got the blood test back. Yeah, um, so there's something I need to say. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, uh, still waiting for a growth spurt, though. Now I say that now, but I'm going to blink. She's going to be married. Beautiful. Whiskey sour for you? Nate, you took the words right out of my face. You good? <sighs> Sorry, you got to say something? Never mind, doesn't matter. <sighs> About me quitting MCS, right? First time or the second time? Because I know it's all shrouded in mystery. Well, maybe not the first time, because that's when I went to work for Glenmore. Second time. Ooh, nobody knows what happened to Joe. Seriously, we don't need to talk about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Look, I know the MCS rumor mill. You had to have heard something, so just spit it out. Tell me what you heard. Look, it happened a long time ago. Shit happens. We can talk about it. Okay. I heard that uh, someone went on a business trip and had to 
much to drink and uh, wound up at the hotel room door of someone else. She let him in and then she had to kick him out. Interesting. So, you want to know what really happened? Like I said, it doesn't matter. Cal, do you want to know what really happened? Okay, Joe, what happened? Your table's ready. Hey, you gentlemen. It's been a Too pleasure. Slow. Enjoy your dinner. I got it. Don't even argue with me. I'm going to expense it anyways. Just pretend to be mildly interested when I bring up the vast economic benefits of radio advertising. Right this way. Is that what you're doing now? I'm selling airtime for the Aries Network. I can't imagine a lot of companies are advertising on the radio instead of the internet. Here you are. Vanessa will be right with you. Thank you. No, it's all regional now. Very few national accounts anymore. That's why the hell I'm out there. Ah. Is this your region, Albuquerque, Phoenix? No. I'm the bit Atlantic dude, filling in for the Southwest dude, because he's on paternity leave, because that's a thing. How's it going? Paternity leave? I think he's in way over his head. All in all, somewhere between peachy keen and tough tomatoes. But this trip has been extra peachy. So let's eat, drink, and be merry. Wow, you two are already in a festive mood. It looks like you're set on drinks for now. Yeah. Do you need a minute with the menu? Yeah, please. Okay, no problem. Take uh, your time. Vanessa? Yeah. It is Vanessa, right? Yes. Vanessa, can you start us out with like a dozen oysters or something? Absolutely. What kind would you like? Surprises. You got it. Hmm. <sighs> looks good. I like this joint. Look at all the up and outers. Yeah, I don't come here often, but when I've been, it's it's been good. Good veal. Laura's gone back to school for nutrition. What? Which means she makes a lot of shit that I don't like to eat. Like quinoa or kale, chia seeds, kefir. Kefir. I know. I never heard of kefir. But imagine this. Imagine you take yogurt and you put it in the trunk of your car for the entire month of July. Now, imagine you take your trunk age yogurt and you eat it. That's keeper. I, I'm so confused right now. What, what, what are you saying? I know. The woman who used to eat like a sumo and drink us both under the table is now officially a health food nut. And you know what? She doesn't buy this stuff at a grocery store like some semi-normal person. You know what she does? She makes it at home, in our kitchen, like some deranged Alton Brown or something. You know, she tries to slip this stuff into my breakfast smoothie to mask the flavor. It doesn't hide it. You know what it does? It tastes like someone threw up a fruit salad in my glass. Oh, I gotta, sorry, I gotta take this. It's okay, right back. Hello? You at your dinner with Joe? What time is it? I thought I'd see how it was going. Are you having a good time? <sighs> yeah, kinda. It's weird. I bet. Good conversation? <laughs> uh, it's educational. Well, you wanted to do this. I know. But yeah, it's good. It's fine. You're right, Joe, Joe's a fun guy. Hey, uh, I gotta go. Okay. Thanks for calling. Good luck. Rabbi? Cardavelli. Hi. What are you doing here? I have two neighborhood watering holes. Last night I was at the one near my synagogue, and this one's near my home. Another mullah, Rabbi? Uh, no, thank you, Nate. I think I'll settle. It's on me, Rabbi. Oh, well, thank you, Nate. Uh, I know it's only been a day, but how's it going with that big decision? I'm concerned about one of my coworkers. 
the sin. Can I tell you a story? <sighs> sure. On the morning of June 4th, 1783, in the village of Annenay, France, the entire community got together for a bonfire. Now, this was no ordinary bonfire. Above the fire was a platform, and tethered to that platform was a large silk bag, 30 feet in diameter. Slowly, it was filled with hot air from the bonfire, until by noon, the bag was full. The ropes holding it down stretched to the maximum. So, at that moment, they tied the bag shut, cut the ropes, and set the balloon free. The crowd cheered. The balloon went straight up into the blue sky, over a mile into the air. That marked the first public launch of a hot air balloon and man's first major step in a quest for flight. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Some days later, several miles away, the balloon came back to Earth and was greeted by pitchfork-wielding peasants torn apart claimed it was the devil's work. Rabbi, do your, does your congregation find these stories helpful? Change, even when it's for the best, it's hard for people to understand. And people fear things they don't understand. And fear can make people do strange things. Yeah. You want to know what to do? Yeah. Flip a coin. <laughs> I'm serious. You got a quarter? I'm not, okay, listen, hey, I'm not gonna make a big decision based on a coin flip. Well, it's not a legally binding coin toss, okay? Okay. All right, now, heads, you take the promotion. Tails, you turn it down. Got it? Got it. Say it. Heads, I take the promotion. Tails, I turn it down. Okay, flip the coin. No. What were you hoping for? Heads or tails? No, don't tell me. But when you flipped that coin, something went through your head. Yeah, I gotta hit the road too. Merry Christmas. Hey, Laura just texted me to bring her some of those lollipops with scorpions in them for Casey for stocking stuffers. Mm. Is that a real thing? Scorpion lollipops? Yeah, they sell them at the airport. Yeah, that's perfect. I don't know what's worse, scorpion candy or fucking kefir. <laughs> I'm doing a big family Christmas thing. Mom's asking me to get eggnog. Yeah. Buddy Ollie's not much of a waiter, huh? <laughs> Buddy Holly? Not much of a waiter. She kind of disappeared. Uh, excuse me. Oh, I don't see our waitress. Oh, Vanessa? Yeah, Vanessa. I don't see Vanessa anywhere. Is there something I can help you with? Yeah. I need another drink. Uh, certainly. Whiskey sour for me. And another one for you, sir? Sure. Burn them. Sneak. Right away. Dude, I cannot believe that you have not seen Pulp Fiction. I've seen Pulp Fiction? What, what the hell are you talking about? Buddy Holly is not much of a waiter? That's from Pulp Fiction? Oh. Travolta and Uma at the restaurant? With the twist? All right, so what about Buddy Holly? Jesus. He was their waiter. Oh, right, right. Um, uh, 
what's his name? Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. See, I, I know, I remember. Look, give me a Royale with cheese or Path of a Righteous Man. Not something totally obscure, I'm, I'm there. But Holly's not much of a waiter. Good Lord, man. Don't hate. Here you go. Speaking of Buddy Holly. Blake is getting you another round. Okay. What do we got here? Blue points. Ah, classic. Thank you, Vanessa. Do you want to order now, or? Uh, why don't you give uh, us a little time with these beauties, all right? You got it. Thank you. Just let my mom know not to wait on me. Oh, shit. I'm keeping you from a family thing. The eggnog. Crap, you just said that. God damn it. It's fine. It's fine. Why are you even here? Seriously. Okay, it's going to be a long night. Tomorrow night's the main event. Tonight is just the, the, the pre-show. It's really casual. Everybody's showing up from out of town late. It'll, it'll, it'll go late. I'm, I'm fine. I'll tell you what. Let's finish off the oysters, order another drink, I'll get an Uber, and Joe, I'll go to the airport. Joe, I can eat at the it's, airport. It's Joe, it's fine. Okay? It's fine. All right, fucker. Let's do this. Ah, there perfect timing. Perfect nice. timing. Just what I need. Bourbon and oysters. Not a combination I see very often. Oh, my man. You're missing out. Is that so? Actually, the guy who holds the Guinness record for shucking oysters, a Canadian named McMurray, pairs his oysters with whiskey. Uh, what he does is he eats the oyster and pours a little whiskey in, takes a sip, different kinds of oysters for different kinds of whiskey. So the whole pairing thing has something to do with, you know, where the oysters are from, where the whiskey's made. Kind of like terroir for wine. Check out the big brain on bread. You a smart motherfucker. Very interesting. Well, enjoy. Oh, shit. Is that Pulp Fiction again? God damn it. God, God, I, need, I need to rewatch it. Obviously. First date. Second tops. You seem sweet, though. What do you think? Odds wise. Think they have a shot? No. Neither one of them is currently swiping through their phone on Tinder. Courage and sign. And she's not paying much attention to the waiter, so that's good. What do you mean? Are you kidding me? He's Jason fucking Momoa. She wouldn't end her day. She'd be all over Drogo. Oh. Uh, Nice save. Odds wise, it's a probable 12 to 7. All right. I have a question for you. Shoot. Is it a bad idea to start a relationship during the holidays? Is this for you? No, 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 no. One of my account managers. He recently took out a woman who moved into his building. Continue. Well, he, uh, he wants to ask her out again, but he's not sure if he should wait till after the holidays. Huh. That's an interesting conundrum. And like all conundrums, it's got its pros and its cons. True. I think that the gifts exchange is mandatory, even if the date happens after Christmas. Mm. Correct. Give me dragons. But the substance of said gift is critical. Yes. Too nice. Coming on so strong, overcompensating. What's he hiding? Tiny penis. Too chintzy? 
Cheap bastard. Doesn't know how to treat a lady. What's he hiding? Tiny penis. <laughs> Maybe dragons. I said forget about trying to get her something thoughtful. Oh, death sentence. It's too early to be thoughtful. No, it can be done. Now why take the risk? On the other hand, go on. There's a lot of parties and social gatherings where it'd be nice to have a companion. Especially one you would generally enjoy being with. And of course, the New Year's Eve factor cannot be overlooked. Naturally. You know, I really feel for you, dude. I'm glad I'm not in that boat. But New Year's nowadays is more like me and Laura sitting on our PJs on the couch trying to stay awake till that damn ball drops. It's a hell of a lot better than being alone. Yeah, hey, uh, speaking of New Year's, mm. you heard about the war move? Oh, yeah, I got one, I got one at home. No, dumbass. The SS Warman was an Australian passenger steamer in the 1800s. Oh, yeah, yeah, that Warman, of course. Yeah. So, in 1899, the Warman was headed back from Canada to Australia when the captain realized on December 31st that he was only a short distance from the intersection of the equator and the international date line. The captain thought, this will be cool as fuck. Captain in 1899 thought this would be cool as fuck? Yes, cool as fuck. Ahoy. So, he slows the engines, and he steers that thing so he can park right in the middle of that intersection. So the bow of the ship was in summer, but the stern was in winter, and the port was still in 1899, while the starboard was in 1900. So for that moment in time, the ship was in two separate days, months, seasons, years, and centuries. <laughs> that, is, that is cool as fuck. Ahoy. Is it true? Of course, technically, the 20th century didn't start until 1901. All right, gentlemen, are we ready for entrees? Yes. Um... I can come back if you need another minute. No, I'm gonna, you said the veal was good, right? Feels great. I'm gonna have the veal. I'll have the same. Oh, excuse me, can we get a bottle of Raymond Cole Cab? You can bring that now. Actually, how about a bottle of Merlot? Fine with me. Perfect. Dressing for your salad? Caesar. Ranch, please. You got it. Thank you, Vanessa. I saw that. Oh, seriously? Ranch dressing? What, do you have a problem with ranch dressing? I have a problem with the ubiquitous nature of ranch dressing. Fuck you and your big words. Ranch dressing is delicious. Okay. But it doesn't go on everything. Fried mozzarella with ranch, calamari with ranch, onion rings with ranch. It's lazy. What about pizza with ranch? Oh, my God. Okay, look. If your pizza needs ranch dressing to taste better, you're eating shitty pizza. Dude. I was in Philadelphia last month, and I had this braised oxtail. It was just smothered in ranch. Oh, oh. God, Philistine. It was so good. Oh. It was so good. Well, I'm sure they can get some for your veal. Don't think I won't do it. <laughs> Don't you dare. Whoa, that was quick. Ah, thank God. My ranch dressing has arrived. Excuse me. Can you bring my friend here two large sizes of ranch dressing? No, 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 no. I know. Oh, my God, you're an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, that night. Uh, it doesn't matter, Joe. It was a long time ago. Plus, some of my... Look. This is what happened. You were right that there were copious amounts of alcohol being consumed that night. But the MCS rumor mill got everything else pretty much fucking wrong except for the fact that it happened a long time ago, longer than you know. This happened before I left the first time. Amber and I and a shit ton of other MCS employees were at this bullshit convention in LA. She went back to her room, I went back to mine.
Nothing happened? Nothing. Okay. Two drunk people on a business trip in a hotel. Not even making out? You're saying nothing happened? Cal, nothing happened. Look, truth is, I did try to make a move, okay? I did. I'm laying on the bed. She's sitting on the couch. I reach over, grabbed her hand, tried to pull her over to the bed. That's when she asked me to leave. So I did. And then what? Came home, went back to work, like nothing ever happened. How, how long until you left for Glenmark? That was like six months or so. But that was about money. They gave me an offer I couldn't turn down. It seemed like, turned out it wasn't worth it though. So I came back. Stuff with Amber was pretty much water under the bridge at that point. Or so I thought. <laughs> well, what happened? For the longest time long before L.A. Amber had wanted me to fire Mark Swartz and promote her. Now, when I came back, she started at it again. And I told her no again. Next thing I know, I'm being called up to the sixth floor. She must have gave them some bullshit story about what happened in L.A. So I offered to show them all of our text. They said no. Hell, I even told Hal that I would take a lie detector test. Be glad to take it. I'd pay for it myself. They said no. Sorry, Vanessa. That looks good. Thank you. Hell hath no fury. You know lie detectors aren't legal in court? At least they would have known the truth by now. You beat a lie detector. Me, I can be a lie detector. Well, I'm not saying you can, but they can be beat. The theory is you have to trigger a pain response with the truthful answers to even out the body's natural reaction to telling the lie. I heard of that. That's the old uh, thumbtack in the shoe thing. I think it's a lot harder than it is in the movie. Uh, I did hear a story about a guy who tried to beat a lie detector. He uh, wound up sewing an electrical wire down his pant leg sew the trigger to the inside of his pocket because you're not allowed to bring anything in the room with you. <laughs> this way, he could just slip his hand into his pocket and give himself a little shock. Oh, my God. What was this for? Like, casino job? No, no, no. Pharmaceutical company. But, but, he did a lousy job on the wiring in the middle of the test. It starts to spark. <laughs> no well, way. Yeah, well, he doesn't notice at first because he's expecting a little pain, but back-to-back -back sparks sets his pants on fire. <laughs> well, he still doesn't notice. But then he starts to smell smoke and he realizes what happened. So he casually asks if he can be excused to the restroom. And they say, no, if you leave the interview, you don't get the job. So he casually starts to put one leg out with the other, winds up setting both legs on fire. <laughs> Winds up jumping up in the middle of the interview, rips his pants off, and starts stomping on him to put out the fire. 
literally, liar, liar, oh, pants man. on fire. I don't even care if it's a true story. It's, it's great. It's, it's probably great. urban legend. But it's urban legend that works because nobody understands how lie detectors work. <laughs> You know, they're this mysterious magical device that can read your mind, tell whether or not you're telling the truth or not. I've always wondered if the lie detector could tell if you told a half truth. What do you mean? Meaning if you left something out. So, let's say the cops think you robbed, say, a liquor store. You didn't, but they strapped down a lie detector in. Did you rob a liquor store? No. Did you go home after work? Yes. The truth is, you didn't go straight home after work. You went to the strip club. But you don't want to talk to the cops about the strip club, so you leave that part out. Does that make it look like you're lying? Are the cops going to think you robbed the liquor store anyway? No, it, it's, it's a lie detector. With, withholding the truth isn't the same as lying. A, a lie is something you say, not something you didn't say. That's a rationalization. Deception is still deception, man. Okay. No, look, my mother didn't need a lie detector to tell if I was fucking lying. Okay, but sometimes that's the better option. It's not what my mother thought. For instance, what, what, it, what if the truth is hurtful? To hear or to tell. Let's say I got a Tesla. And I know it's your dream car, but I don't say anything. Is it a deception, a lie, to not tell you because I know it will hurt your feelings? You got a Tesla. Oh my God. Dumbass, <laughs> I, I picked you up in my car. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You got a Tesla and didn't tell me. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make a point here, <laughs> asshole. Okay, okay. An omission is not the same as a lie. That's bullshit. <sighs> Here you go, gentlemen. Anything else I can get for you right now? Well, good. Enjoy. Okay. If a fucker can't handle the truth, man, that's not my problem. Look, I'm not talking about spewing forth every little opinion that crosses your pretty little head. Sometimes you gotta keep that shit to yourself. I'm talking about not living my life walking on eggshells because I might offend somebody because I bought their dream car and they're still driving their crappy Buick Century 2000. Fact of the matter is, Hal and them, they didn't care about the truth. It was a hell of a lot easier just throw me to the wolves than get into a sexual harassment, he said, she said, and look like they're siding with the man. There was no investigation, no collaborating witnesses come to testify. Hell, did anybody even ask you about me? Exactly. They took her word at face value. And when I tried to defend myself, they didn't want to hear it. I got fucking railroaded. Yeah, because you're an innocent party in all this. No, but I'm not the only guilty party either. Turn back the clock, what would you do differently? Honestly? No eggshells. <laughs> I would have fucked her. Hell, I suffered the same consequences if I did, pretty much. Where'd it go wrong? You mean like, was it the sixth whiskey sour? The text. I should have just texted her, I'll see you tomorrow. Well, why didn't you? Well, I don't know. Bullshit. Maybe I just like the idea of it. Tension of a pretty girl. Uh, you mean besides Laura? Come on. You know what I mean. Laura and I have been together for, what, 15 years now? Neither one of us is young anymore. Amber was... She was this fantasy, this idea. I guess I just wanted to push it and see how far, how far it would go. 
ego. And then what? <sighs> Went too far? Yeah. Yeah, you got railroaded. I sowed the wind, and I reaped the whirlwind. <laughs> yeah, whirlwind's right. After you left, the whole company had to go through harassment training. No shit. Yeah, no shit. Nobody said where you went. You know, not the most subtle move by HR, but all of a sudden we're going through workshops of unwelcome advances. Ah. Sorry about that, man. I wish I could unring that bell. I really do. Yeah, okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I am stuck. Yeah, I'm. I can't touch mine. I'm done. Cal, thanks, man. This is great choice, great food. I appreciate it. Glad you liked it. Yeah. No. <sighs> uh, okay. Your turn. Nope, I told you, I'm done. Not the veal. What were you going to say way back in the bar? Oh, yeah, that was uh, when we were at, 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 at uh, MCS. And about why you left. No, it wasn't. You were going to say something else. So what were you actually going to say back in the bar? Honestly. No eggshells, man. You vanished. You just vanished. Not just from work. From me, from Kate. Everything. You just vanished. Laura and I, we had a lot of stuff to work out. You know. I, I know. I get that. But we didn't know what happened. We just wanted to be there for you guys. We knew you needed space, you had shit to work out, but you totally disappeared from our lives. We were your friends, why would you shut us out? And we go from hanging out almost every weekend to nothing, radio silence, don't tell Kate to talk to Laura. What the fuck, Joe? I mean, when the shit hits the fan, don't you want the people that care about you the most by your side? Dude, marriage counseling is really weird. It's tough. Oh, come it, on. Wait, you don't know, it's fucking embarrassing. It was us. Fucked up, okay? Laura and I, we had a lot of shit to work out. Our marriage was in trouble. You left town and didn't even say goodbye. We needed a new start. Just, just like you did, coming to Phoenix. Having family around us was really good for us. It was really good for things. We needed stuff that was familiar. That's what was good for us. We needed that. It was like you guys were dead. And it was especially hard on Kate. And frankly, that was the beginning of the end of our relationship. So thank you very much for that, Joe. Don't you blame that on me. Hey, if a fucker can't handle the truth. Fuck you. I'm sorry that giving 100% of my attention to not losing my family was tough on you and your long distance relationship. My marriage, my marriage was hanging by a fucking thread. I 
I was about to lose the only woman in the history of fucking planet Earth that ever gave a shit about me. Nothing else mattered. Not even you. You're right. Fuck. Fucking wine. You're getting all emotional. I'm sorry, Joe. Hey. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh. Fuck, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know what to do, okay? After what I did, I didn't know how to face you and Kate. I just wanted, just wanted things to go back to normal, okay? How was everything? Great, thanks. Any room for dessert? Just a check, please. Okay? Yeah. I'm okay. Sorry for blowing up back there, Cal. I didn't mean it. Yeah. Let's just forget about it. Done. Corvette's still here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's probably the restaurant owners. You might be right. much wine. <laughs> Not gonna be trouble sleeping on a plane, that's for damn sure. Yeah. Holy shit. What? I just remember that guy's name. What guy? Oh, Dick Anus? Yeah, Dick Anus. His name was Richard Rexanus. Fuck. His name was Dick Rex Anus? No. no. Rex Anus. That is literally the world's worst name. Dick Rex Anus. Well, he went by Richard. Yeah, I bet, <laughs> I bet he did. <laughs> uh, he was a really different type of fella. <laughs> you mean besides the sleeveless vest? Yeah, he was a different, kind of different. He used to do a lot of public whistling, which I don't like. I don't want to hear that shit. He ate lox and cinnamon raisin bagels. What the fuck? <laughs> Plus, I think it was on heroin. <laughs> you know, the lox and cinnamon bagels are an obvious red flag, but what, what else makes you think he was on heroin? He told me about the skiing accident he had. He went to a doctor, got him prescribed some oxycodone. But he talks about the oxy real casual like. Everybody I've ever known has been on heroin. Started with Oxy. You think because he was prescribed oxycodone, now he's using heroin? I'm just saying. One thing leads to another. <sighs> Locks and cinnamon bagels. What the fuck? <laughs> God. <laughs> 
Oh, man. <sighs> Cal, man, thanks for coming all the way out here to see me. It really means a lot to me. I appreciate it. from here to Buffalo? Mm, no, I take a puddle jumper to Albuquerque and then the red eye to Buffalo. Hey, Cal, I appreciate you bringing me all the way out here. It can't be convenient with all the festivities uh, you've got going on. Okay. It's not that bad. Listen, even with a little airport traffic, by the time I get home, the night will still be young. You take a lot of red eyes? From time to time, I don't mind it though. If I get tired enough, I can sleep on a plane. <sighs> Some people, they can't sleep on planes, so yeah. it just totally sucks yeah, for I them. I can't sleep on planes. I've taken a couple of red eyes, usually international. And the best part is, I get to keep my travel per diem. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it's good because Buying Christmas presents for a little girl can put you in the poorhouse faster than you can say MC Hammer. So, Christmas Eve red eye? It's great. Get to sleep on the plane, get home, just in time to open up all those presents. Laura, she always makes Christmas so special. And Casey. Casey. Hi. Hang on. Casey's. Casey. I... Fuck. Uh, I can't do this anymore, Cal. I can't. I can't do this anymore. It's okay, Jim. No, it's not okay. It hasn't been okay for a long fucking time. I fucked up. I fucked up so bad. Joe. Oh. Yeah, I did. Okay. Cal. I was in Amber's hotel room because We've been having an affair. Quite a while. Look. When she asked me to fire Swartz, I said, I would, but I went to Randall and he said, no, I didn't know what to do. So I gave her some bullshit story. That's why I went to Glenmar. I thought that if, I, I thought that if I got away from her and we didn't work together, that I could keep it going with her. That worked for about five months. And then she asked me to come back and so I did. At that time, I thought that, I thought that all of the promotion shit was blown over. When I got back, she started at it again. And finally, when I said no, that I wouldn't do it, that it isn't gonna happen, that's when everything fucking blew up. So, Joe, do you, you, you don't need to go into all the details. Cal, please. Okay. 
Cal. Amber didn't go to HR. She went to Laura. She gave her everything, every email that we ever sent to each other. She gave it to me. If I don't, fuck that. If I don't, oh God. I haven't seen Casey and Laura for like two years. I don't even know where they are. I don't even know where they are. I'm, I'm so sorry, Joe. All I ever wanted from the time I was a teenager, I mean, all I ever wanted was for someone to actually loved me. I had so much rejection as a kid. My, my biggest hope and my biggest dream was not to play in the majors or go to the moon. I just wanted somebody to love me. And you know what happened when Laura came into my life? She loved me. She loved me like I never thought anybody could ever love me. She did it anyway. She, she loved me. And almost from the first moment we were together, it's like I tried to sabotage it, like I was trying to light a fuse on a fucking bomb. Amber is the only time that I ever cheated. But I play that game dozens of times with dozens of women. Flirt, lure, tease. I don't think I ever really meant to cheat. I just wanted the attention. I just wanted... I just wanted them to want me so that for once I could be the one person that rejected them. I'm sorry. I'm flattered, but I'm a married man. And when it came time to say no, I didn't say no. And the bomb went off, man. Why, why did you do this? Meet me. I... I just wanted things to feel like they were. To be like they were. Just... For one night. Just for one moment. I'm sorry, Cal. I'm really sorry. Oh, oh I uh I can't miss my flight. I got I gotta go. gonna be okay yeah yeah I just I had to get that off my chest what will you do now I'm gonna go back to Buffalo and back to my shitty job and my shitty condo and shitty life it's gonna be okay
Cal. Do you think it? Do you think it's possible to start over again? I think that's a hard thing to do, but it's possible. Laura's not coming back. But maybe you can. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Joe. Merry Christmas, Cal. Sorry I'm late. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We just finished eating. Hi, Dad. Oh. Do you need help cleaning up or? No. Calvin, I want you to go out on the patio and we'll be serving dessert in a few minutes. Okay. Jimmy, Emma, come get some eggnog. Hey, Laura. That was Boston. <laughs> Boston was Boston. Mom and Pop's in their love. No problem with the airline, weather hey, was... Do, 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 do. How was dinner with Joe? It was one of the weirdest nights of my life. Joe's back! <laughs> hey! How was Granny and Pop Pops? Lots of snow! <laughs> Sorry, Uncle Cal. Thanks, Uncle Cal. You got it. How about a drink? Yeah. Cookies! Do you want to talk about it? How are you way really better with this than I am? Cal, I had to make peace a long time ago with Joe and everything that happened. Before us, before coming here, before all of this. It was the worst thing I have ever been through. It was like living in hell. It wasn't easy, especially for me, see. 
But we did it. We held on to each other and we came out the other side and when we did, you were there waiting for us. You are my knight in shining armor. at her. She's happy. She loves you. Joe is in the past. And as long as I leave him there, that is exactly where he'll stay. In the past. I love you. I love you, too. I couldn't tell him. Not everything. Not about you. I wanted to, but... Pity on a dying monster. A mercy.